On a team flight to Los Angeles, Wade Boggs once famously drank 73 beers on a single flight. When he landed, he went out and drank 34 more. That's 107 beers and roughly 16,000 calories. He went two for three with two doubles the next day. Terry Francona says he chews up to 100 pieces of gum per game. That's 1,500 calories just in gum. Alexei Ramirez would take two donuts, put mayonnaise in the middle of them, and eat it before games. And MLB even has its own secret cheesesteak eating contest where one player ate 10 and a half 12 inch cheesesteaks in a single day during a game. A sport with diets like these and little to no running results in fat players. According to studies, 80% of MLB players are technically overweight. Pitchers who weigh over 250 pounds have increased by 936% since the 90s, and researchers at Penn State have even called on MLB to step in, saying the obesity in MLB is not only a health concern for the players, but also for the impressionable youth watching them. MLB players are fatter than ever. They're also better than ever throw harder than ever, and hit balls further than ever. According to some research, fat hitters are the most dangerous in the league, and fat pitchers not only pitch better, but also for longer. However, throughout baseball history, teams have considered being too big a bad thing, incentivizing players to lose weight, cutting players who were overweight, and pressuring overweight players to shed pounds. One team even almost killed their pitcher after the pressure they put on him to lose weight led him to take a fat-burning product that likely led his heart to stop beating. He would later weigh close to 300 pounds and became one of the best pitchers in the league. But is this player an exception or have MLB teams been actively hurting their own players, forcing them to lose weight and sometimes even worse, making them do ridiculous things to hide their weight? Like Pablo Sandoval, when he famously claimed his weight was just muscle, saying he had 24% body fat, when he looked like this. Sandoval was so overweight and athletic, his nickname was Kung Fu Panda, which made him beloved in San Francisco, but the team hated his eating habits. While on the road, they made special arrangements with the hotel that banned him from getting room service, telling the staff that if he ordered food, they weren't allowed to give it to him. There were even rumors and reports that his teammates saw him put Coca-Cola in his water bottle and drank it during games. At one point, his own ex-trainer went public with his bad dieting habits to inspire him to get help, saying he once witnessed Sandoval gain 21 pounds in 21 days while home in Venezuela. When he returned to America, his trainer said he had to sneak him in and out of the team's facility so they wouldn't know how much weight he gained, even faking the flu at one point to give him extra time to shed the pounds. This was done because Sandoval was in the middle of a contract negotiation with the Giants and they feared that if the team saw his weight gain, they'd offer him less money or take away the contract altogether. But Sandoval did get his extension even with the Giants publicly calling him out multiple times for being overweight. He was the second most productive player on a team that won three World Series, was a two-time All-Star, got MVP votes, and even played great defense, earning a five-year, $95 million contract with the Red Sox. He showed up to spring training weighing 255 pounds, making him the fattest third baseman in Major League history and had a terrible first season in Boston, but the manager promised going into 2016 that the panda had lost 20 pounds. He showed up bigger than ever and admitted to the media that he hadn't weighed himself all offseason and said, quote, I did no work in the field nothing. He proceeded to make five errors in 11 games during spring training, got benched for a guy who made 37 times less money than him and only made one start all year. In that game, he swung so hard, his belt literally broke. He appeared in one more game after this, suffered a season-ending injury, and that ended his time in Boston. Team C players like Sandoval and conclude that weight is the issue, but data doesn't necessarily back that up. That season, nine of the league's 10 best hitters were technically overweight, and only one of them weighed less than the average MLB player. If you take the best 20 offensive seasons in the past 10 years, only two of them were from players under 210 pounds. The average
average of this group was 20 pounds heavier than the average MLB player. MLB's best hitters are consistently overweight, even compared to other MLB players, but teams still require many of their heaviest players to diet and exercise to keep their weight down, which has caused a lot of these fat players to get skinnier and then immediately suck at baseball. Like this guy, who was not only bigger than the Kung Fu Panda, his eating habits were so legendary, they started an underground cheesesteak eating contest in MLB. But before we get to that, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Cook Unity, the meal delivery service that partners with real award-winning chefs to deliver restaurant quality meals directly to your door weekly. Cook Unity is as convenient as it gets. Just pick your favorites from hundreds of meals prepared each week. You can even put in your taste preferences and have Cook Unity pick for you. Then they will ship the meals directly to your door and can be prepared in as little as five minutes, saving you from having to do messy cooking mind-numbing shopping and annoying cleaning you can choose from four to 16 meals a week they start as low as $11 a meal and can be paused skipped or canceled anytime most importantly these things actually taste amazing cook unity just sent a delivery to my door and I crushed one for breakfast lunch and dinner immediately right now as I speak I'm eating a Korean flank steak rice bowl from chef Esther Choi and with all the time I save shopping cooking and cleaning I can continue to to focus on important things like making this video. There are a ton of meal delivery services, but Cook Unity is the only one actually serving meals from the industry's leading culinary talent, and you can tell by the quality. To see for yourself, just go to cookunity.com slash baseball50 or click the link in the description and use my code baseball50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them out. Do it right now. During a series in Philadelphia, Demetri Young ate 11 12-inch cheesesteaks throughout a three-game series. The Phillies cooking staff were so mind-blown, they began keeping track of how many cheesesteaks teams and players ate to see if anyone could eat more, and ever since, teams have come to Philly trying to beat this record. The four-day record is held by the Rocky strength coach, who ate 25 foot-long cheesesteaks in four days. The team record is the Mets, who ate 103 cheesesteaks in one day. Surprisingly, they would go on to lose their next three games. The replay analyst for the Giants ate eight cheesesteaks and was so full that he put two more cheesesteaks in a blender, made a cheesesteak smoothie, and drank two more cheesesteaks to reach 10 cheesesteaks in one day. Then in 2021, Adrian Sanchez ate three cheesesteaks before the game three more cheesesteaks in the first inning, then three more cheesesteaks in the fifth inning. Sanchez was an active player and did this knowing he could be put into the game at any moment. Luckily for him, he never was. He finished one more cheesesteak after the game, setting the single day record at 10 and a half cheesesteaks. Dimitri Young had no intentions of starting a contest. He ate 11 cheesesteaks without even thinking about it because he said, quote, I was just a fat ass which to him actually helped. After playing poorly enough to get cut by the Tigers, he shocked baseball by coming back the next year out of shape at 32, became an all-star, and batted 320 while he says he was close to 320 pounds. Sadly, this was the season that Young was diagnosed with diabetes. The weight loss and health issues that followed caused him to retire after just one more season, saying that any time he lost weight, he felt like the ball had a parachute on it, and that is just basic physics. The more mass someone has, the more power. It shouldn't be surprising that a study done by Harvard found that being overweight doubles the likelihood that someone will be a great power hitter. It also found no evidence that weight gain had any negative impact on offensive numbers. But teams are still adamant players stay under certain weights. After having an amazing season in 2013 for the Dodgers, they offered Ronnie Belliard another contract with a clause that said during spring training, he had to step on a scale and weigh under 210 pounds. If he could weigh in under 210 pounds, he would make $825,000. If he couldn't weigh under 210, he would make no money, his contract would be voided, and he was off the team. He lost the weight, like the Dodgers asked, made 825 grand, 
then had the worst year of his career and retired. The Mariners sent Miguel Montero down for being 40 pounds overweight. This extra weight was such an issue, a scout who he had a pre-existing beef with once ordered an ice cream sandwich at the stadium and had it sent down to the dugout to Montero during a game. He then got out of the dugout threatened the scout with a bet, and threw the ice cream sandwich back at the scout. But stats show that bigger players outperform other players significantly on offense. The last three seasons, players who weigh 240 or more have an OPS plus of 113, meaning they are 13% more productive than the average MLB hitter. However, this doesn't mean teams don't have to be cautious, because the truth is, being big definitely doesn't help in the field. In 2011, the Kung Fu Panda somehow was the second best defensive third baseman in the league based on multiple metrics, including range. But after adding the weight in Boston, he was the worst third baseman in the league according to Defensive War. Demetri Young was the best hitter on his team in 2007. But despite this, according to Baseball Reference, he wasn't even one of the top 12 most valuable players on his team because that's how much he cost them on defense. A guy like Miguel Cabrera came up as a 210 pound shortstop. By the time he was 30, he was 30 pounds heavier, helping him become one of the best hitters of his generation. At 210 pounds, he probably wouldn't have been able to hit the 44 home runs he did in his triple crown season, but being at 240, he was no longer an effective shortstop, was limited to third base, and by the time he retired at 267, he wasn't even able to play any defensive position and could only DH. So if a major league team let all their players gain 20 pounds over the offseason, they'd probably hit more homers and score more runs, but this added benefit would quickly be erased by their poor defense and terrible base running. However, thankfully for big guys, there is a position where base running and fielding are essentially pointless, which is why being fat definitely makes you a significantly better pitcher. At least that's what Bartolo Colon thinks. He gained over 100 pounds during his MLB career. When he arrived in America at 185 pounds, scouts clocked him throwing 84 miles per hour. By the time he was 25, he was 30 pounds heavier and threw at least 15 miles per hour faster. A few years later in 2001, he had gained 65 pounds since signing with the Indians. Bartolo didn't care. The Indians offered Bartolo Colon $50,000 to weigh 225 pounds. Instead, he got fatter and became the team's best pitcher. The team even ordered him to ride a tandem bicycle around the stadium with his other overweight teammate, Cecil Fielder, to make them lose weight. He gained even more weight and ended up winning a Cy Young. Bartolo says when he gained weight, he noticed he could throw harder, credited his weight gain with his love for McDonald's and Taco Bell, which he discovered when coming to America, and by 2013, he was 80 pounds heavier than he was when he entered the league, and put up the best numbers of his career at 40 years old. He then went to the Mets weighing in at 285 pounds, 100 pounds heavier than when he got to the major leagues and became an all-star at 43 years old. The added weight even allowed him to become the oldest player in MLB history to hit their first major league home run. The impossible has happened! Gaining 100 pounds doesn't seem like it would make you better, but science actually backs this up. A study done in 2016 found body weight to be the metric that affected velocity the most, meaning the massive amounts of running starting pitchers have traditionally been expected to do for decades in order to increase stamina may be counterproductive because it keeps pitchers' body weights low. That's the logic David Wells used when he showed up to Yankee Spring Training announcing that he was not only lazy, but extremely out of shape, then proceeded to win 20 games and finish third in Cy Young voting. He was a massive fan of Babe Ruth, even at one point buying a Babe Ruth game-worn hat for $35,000 and wore it during a game until he was told to take it off after one inning. Just like Babe Ruth, Wells was always overweight, saying he used to rig the team scales to say he weighed less while the Blue Jays were trying to make him lose weight. Wells' weight was such a topic, an article in Sports Illustrated opened with this paragraph. Wells is a fat guy who is content being fat, and if he is in search of anything, it is a beer. 
Coors Light in a bottle, please. Everything about Wells is fat. The three likenesses of his family members tattooed on his upper body are fat. The dark brown goatee that could comfortably house a family of six robins is fat. His fingers and toes, his ears and nose, his forehead and chin are fat. Even his voice sounds fat. This was published in Sports Illustrated on an issue that Wells was on the cover of. Even though he was leading the league in wins and was the starter of the All-Star game that year, people were obsessed over his weight, convinced it was a massive issue. When he pitched in Baltimore, the Orioles were pushing him to lose weight, leading him to take a fat-burning supplement called Ripped Fuel, which contained ephedrine, likely causing Wells to develop an irregular heartbeat, which led to chest spasms. He was rushed to the hospital and at one point flatlined for two minutes but luckily Wells survived this close call and went on to have his best seasons repeatedly being unapologetically open about not caring about his weight and ended up pitching 20 major league seasons and there is data to back up that his weight had something to do with this in 2005 Fangraphs took data from 49 years of baseball going back to 1946 divided pitchers into four categories tall short, thin, and fat. And not only did fat pitchers have the lowest ERA, they had the longest careers. The idea that bigger pitchers perform better seems to be coming more mainstream, and MLB weights continue to go up. But for many MLB teams, overweight pitchers have always been seen as a risk. In fact, some big pitchers barely even got a real chance in MLB because teams thought they were too fat. Jumbo Diaz had seven minor league seasons with an ERA under three. At one point, he was pitching at 342 pounds. Despite these great numbers, he was only called up after he was able to lose 70 pounds in one offseason. And even after losing all this weight, Jumbo was still officially listed as the heaviest pitcher in MLB history. CC Sabathia was second, pitching at 300 plus pounds while putting up Hall of Fame numbers. In his 30s, he thought losing weight would help. Showed up 30 pounds lighter and had the worst year of his career. Ray King, listed at 225, may actually be the heaviest pitcher ever. His nickname was Burger King, but in order to get a chance with the Nats, they wanted him to lose weight. He did, then had the worst year of his career and retired. Bobby Jenks was so big that his manager famously called him out of the bullpen by mimicking what a fat person looks like. Jenks was big his whole career and dominant, but in 2010, he got in the best shape of his life. Had the worst year of his career, only pitched one more season, and then retired. Even Tim Lincecum, who was never fat, fell victim to this. He became known for his monstrous in and out order, which included three double cheeseburgers, two orders of fries, and a chocolate strawberry shake, which was about 3,150 calories. Lincecum decided to get healthy, stopped eating fast food, and lost 22 pounds over the offseason. He went from winning two Cy Youngs in four years to having a 5.18 ERA. It's impossible to know how much losing weight alone affected Tim Lincecum or any other player, and it definitely wasn't the only factor in these players' declines. But over the past three years, pitchers weighing over 260 pounds outperformed the average pitcher in ERA by 14%. And with pitchers, getting bigger and bigger it seems like people are starting to believe more and more that being fat makes you better at baseball